Hey guys, Parallel here, and welcome to Star Trek Online. In this video, I would like to do a build of the new uh, Ferengi Nandi warship, Tier 6. Uh, this was the ship that was just recently uh, uh, just recently given away as part of the uh, Rysian Summer event. And I'm here on my Romulan tactical officer. So, for this video, I wanted to go through, actually build this ship from scratch. Um, so let's head down to the shipyard. A new Romulus here. And let's take a look. So here it is. As you can see, I have it totally blank. Uh, nothing is slotted as yet. So. I kind of wanted to just go through how I actually build out my ships and give a little bit of tips and tricks as I do it. And also, I mean, I just know that uh, I remember when I was, um, you know, new to Star Trek Online, um, I always enjoyed watching these types of videos just, just to get an idea of, you know, watching other people build ships and, you know, what they find useful and know any tips or tricks that they had so I always found these videos uh, useful just when I was learning so I guess before I get too far into this let me uh, ready the ship here before I get too far into it I just want to do a little bit of disclaimer that I am NOT a top tier you know DPS um, I'm not a top tier DPS character. I don't have, you know, top end gear. I have been 60 for a while now, so I have farmed up and upgraded a decent amount of gear, but uh, I am not uh, in that top tier. Plus, as a ship build video, I mean, this is just how I like to build ships. Of course, there are many, many different viable builds for ships in Star Trek Online. It's actually one of the things I really enjoy about this game, so everyone has their own kind of build that they will find that works for them and works for their playstyle. So with those out of the way, let's go ahead and get started here. And I actually realized I need to go back here. So I still have most of my top end gear on my old ship. So let's, yeah, let's get, I'm going to need all of these on my new ship. Uh, not that. That is the specific console for the my current ship, which was the um, Morigu. All right, so let's get started here. Now, the first thing when you build a ship, I'm sure you've heard a lot of uh, a lot of players say this, but you have to choose your energy type. So what energy type of damage do you want to be doing? So for me, I've invested most of my time into anti-proton. So you can see here I have uh, anti-proton beam arrays that I've upgraded to tier 14. And in some cases I have epic. Uh, it's in other cases just a very rare, but or ultra rare in, these ca in this case. So but the idea is that you always try to focus on one type of energy because that way all of your tactical consoles will buff that energy type and you can uh, you know, vastly increase your DPS that way instead of mixing different energy types. So that's the first thing you have to decide is your energy type. The second thing is you know, uh, what is your play style that you want? How do you want to fly this ship? Do you want to have forward firing weapons? So do you want to have a ship that's you know always pointed at the enemy? Or do you want to have more of a broadside uh, type of arrangement where you can be broadsiding the enemy and flying around? So and based on that, that will choose, you know, whether you want to have, you know, uh, forward arc weapons or you want to have wide arc beam type weapons. So in this case, the Nandi is pretty interesting and unique ship. That it is, you know, very maneuverable. Not quite to the level of escorts, but it's still maneuverable. But yet it has a um, four by four layout. So four weapons in the front and four weapons in the back. 
to me this kind of makes it lend itself more to like a broadside sort of like a beam escort type build so like a beam based escort so since the beams have the widest arc um, and you can have all eight of your beams uh, you know firing broadside as you you know circle around the enemy um, with your maneuverability so that's kind of the build that I'd like to go for here so let's see here let's start out let's put in my four top beams into the front and for the rear for now I am gonna put in my um, kinetic cutting beam now if, uh, if those of you who don't know this is a weapon you get from the uh, Omega reputation and the reason a lot of people like to run this is well one because it's a 360 degree arc which is nice so you can throw it in the back and it'll always hit but also because it pairs with a console called the yeah, Universal Assimilated Module. So when it pairs with this console, it gives you a two-piece set bonus. I will get info here. It gives you a two-piece set bonus called, what's it called? Omega Weapon Amplifier, which is a really, really uh, awesome uh, two-piece set bonus that almost everyone uses on their builds. It gives you, when this procs, it's a 2.5% chance to proc, but you know, and like most procs, you are firing off, especially with you know an eight, eight beam build, you're gonna be firing lots of you know lots of cycling weapons. So there is a very good chance this will proc quite often. It gives you 10 uh, current weapon power, and this is the big one. It gives you a massive bonus to weapon power resi uh, resistance rating, which means your weapons drain a lot less power when firing. So it keeps your weapon power up and keeps your damage maxed out. So let's see here. So in the rear I'm going to finish putting in three more anti-proton beams. So you can see here my, even though I've gotten these up to uh, uh, epic rank 14, um, they're not perfect uh, mods. They're not, I mean if you wanted perfect mods you'd go with like crit D times four, but for me I'm either two crit D or and two crit D and two crit H, or three crit D and a crit H. And that's just because the crit D4 ones are very difficult to get if you if you craft them yourself. It's very hard to get that. Plus, if you try to buy them off the exchange, they're uh, you know almost like a hundred million credits usually to get a crit D4 beam array. So I don't have those. I do have pretty decent ones. I like the crit D3, crit H. Um, I still believe that's you know, uh, pretty high up there in the DPS. And in all honesty, the only reason I even have these up to Epic is because of the... they had an event a while back where you could get Omega Weapon up... or I guess Omega Universal upgrades. And uh, I think that might still be here if I look... Special Projects. Yeah, if you actually... if you look in your Special Projects in your R&D tab, you will see they actually have these are still here from the event even though you can't get these items anymore um, but you would build this thing this uh, tech upgrade Omega and these things were freaking amazing they had a huge they had this 4x quality improvement chance and they gave you a ton of technology points so this was like uh, it was just like a bonanza of being able to upgrade all of your weapons both in quality and in rank so that was a, uh, you know, a great event. I hope it does come back at some point. But that was what honestly allowed me to get all of these uh, up to the epic quality. If not, I would never have upgraded these to epic quality. They're just it's just too expensive to do with the normal upgrades. I would have just left them at uh, you know, uh, very rare. Okay, so those are the weapons, and and actually, I just got enough, um, let me pull off, I want to transfer over a few dilithium. But I just got enough uh, Iconian reputation to get the I Iconian set. So I'm going to start that building right now, because I actually want to, um, on my other build I was using uh, the uh, assimilated two-piece for the 
deflector and the uh, um, impulse engines. And I was using the Dyson Shield and of course the Elite Fleet uh, Singularity Core. But this is honestly more of a defensive build. The reason to use the, the assimilated, um, the two-piece assimilated, is there's a two-piece set bonus that gives you uh, a lot of health or hull regeneration, which is very nice. And then the, the uh, Dyson shield, which has a very nice proc for uh, a large amount of shield regen when the shields uh, when the shields go down. So, so that was more of a defensive set that I typically run. You know, depending on the ship. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of theories out there of you know what sets are best for damage output. This is definitely not the set for damage output. But for me. Uh, the amount of damage output you get from those sets did not seem too huge. Like the Nukara set, I believe it gives you like a 2% damage bonus, I mean, which is decent, but for me, the assimilated set, along with the Dyson Shield, it gives you so much more survivability that it was worth sacrificing, you know, that small amount of damage you can get from some of the other sets. But in come the new Iconian set, which let me start a building here. Um, the Iconian space set is really nice. It's a really nice balance between defense and offense. All of the pieces. Here's the deflector. Let me start these building. The deflector, the singularity, you know, the impulse engine. And the shield array. And let's get these building. It's going to pretty much take the entirety of my dilithium that I have on this character to do this. And they each take five of the Iconian probes, which is like the elite mark for the Iconian reputation. And then it takes 750 of the Iconian marks. So for all three, you're looking at, you know, 96, 97,000 dilithium. Fifteen of the elite marks, the Iconian data cores, and yeah, one. Uh, what is it? Twenty. Twenty-two fifty marks. So yeah, I mean it's the same as the other reputation sets, but in this case, um, the reason why the set, uh, the Iconian set is so great is that naturally these items have pretty good defensive stats, especially the shield. The shield is a resilient shield. It's got, uh, you know, the low bleed through. It's got a good, it has a 20% um, 20%, you know, resist all the shields, which is a good uh, resistance rating for your shields. Plus it has the hot restart uh, when, so it says automatically removes shield, disabled condition after one second and will remove one debuff every 10 seconds, so it's definitely a good shield. Yeah, let me mouse over the, the engines here are also quite good. They actually give you kinetic damage resistance rating, which is good for a deflector array. Um, it gives you shield power setting and um, improved hull hit points and shield hit points and healing, so again, all around good survivability stats on that. And then the, um, well, I don't, won't show me the icon here. Let me claim this. And then the impulse engine also has pretty decent defensive stats. There we go. So let's start the engine. Let me mouse over it here. Alright, so the engine has, you know, plus five defense. I mean, it's pretty good if you're, especially for like a federation with reciprocity, that's a good uh, good way to, you know, increase your defense for those types of builds. Um, flight speed, turn rate, uh, plus five engine power settings, always nice. 
and one at 100% throttle 8.8 .8 energy damage resistance rating. Again, pretty cool. Um, so good survivability. So if you look at all of the, you know, the three pieces minus the warp core, which I'm not going to be building. I can go on that to a second, but um, all the pieces themselves, the base stat on the pieces are all very defensive, really good defensive stats. Plus, what makes it great is when you uh, take a look at the set bonuses. So, for this two-piece set bonus, um, distribute shields also applies 150 shield regeneration. So, the, the two-piece set is another uh, decent um, defensive ability. But the big one is here, this three-set uh, bonus, energy augmentation actuator. When firing energy weapons, 5% chance for plus 15% all energy damage for 8 seconds. Oh, that's awesome right there. Plus, it affects your allies. Plus, it stacks up to 3 times. So this is a really, really awesome 3-set uh, bonus. And that's what makes this set so great. I mean, it had, all the pieces have really good defensive stats as part of the actual pieces. And then the 3-set bonus also makes it a really good offensive um, set that also buffs your team. So that's what I'm going to go with for the deflector, the impulse drive, and the shields. And that one should be done. Let's collect that. Alright, so let's go ahead and slot those. Deflector array, engines, and shields. Now here's the thing is now for the warp core, the reason why I'm not using the the Iconian warp core is that it doesn't have a particular modifier that I want, which is called amp. Now when you look at um, the warp core I was running, which is actually a singularity core because I'm a Romulan, um, you look at all these uh, modifiers it has on it. It has this one modifier called amp. And amp is what, uh, I mean, if you really want your, you know, the top tier warp cores all have amp. And the reason is that the amp gives you this. 3.3% uh, 3 all damage for each subsystem with 75 or higher uh, power. So basically that's 4 times 3.3, so, you know, 12, 13% um, damage bonus just from your warp core. And since this Iconian warp core does not have amp, at least out of the box, it does not have amp uh, on it. Where is it? Yeah, it does not have amp on it out of the box. So I'm not going to be running that right away. I'll probably stick with... Well, here's the thing. The Nandy's going to need a warp core, and of course I'm a Romulan, so I only have singularity cores on me. I may... Yes, I may want to go buy. Actually, you know what? Instead of going to buy one right now, I'm just going to use my obelisk warp core. Where did my obelisk warp core go? Let me check my bank here. I want to see if I left... Hey, it looks like I never even got... Oh, here it is. Here it is. I found it. Uh -huh. I was going to say, I thought I'd done this. Um, well, I don't know if I want to run the Obelisk Core, because then I'd have to run the Ancient Obelisk uh, Directional to get the two-piece bonus. I will go... I guess I'll just splurge and buy a... Um, the Elite Fleet one. But for now, I'm just going to drop... Oops. I'm going to drop in the Obelisk Core just so I can move around in the ship. I will go and... I will go to the uh, my Fleet Spire and buy an Elite Fleet Core and show you how you, you can do that real quick um, because that would be the best option for the Warp Core because that Elite Fleet Core has... Uh, has the amp modifier, which I definitely want. 
For devices, I just use the uh, Temporal Negotiator. This is that device you got from uh, leveling up a de Delta Recruit. I uh, use the Nimbus Pyro Discrest call. It's somewhat handy. Um, oh yeah, this is not a this is not a uh, Romulan ship, so I won't be able to use my Valdor console, which is unfortunate because that console is amazing. Um, and of course, this right here, the all-important Plasmonic Leech. Now, I don't know, um, for those who don't know anyway, the Plasmonic Leech is a incredibly expensive console. I had to save up for a long time for this. When I bought these, they were about 30 million energy credits. I'm not even sure I want to check what they are now. I believe they, they've always been going up. Uh, ship console. Actually, it's... Oh jeez, 62 million. So there you go. If you want a plasmonic leech, start saving up because you need 62 million now. They were only 30 million when I bought it. Uh, that was several months ago. Um, but this is probably single-handedly, hands down, the most important console you can get on a ship. Because as you can see, it steals t uh, power from the target and gives it to you. The important thing is not that, that it drains from the target, the important thing is that it gives it to you. So just firing all of your weapons, you get, you can see here, it gives you plus one power to all settings for 15 seconds. And these it actually stacks up to eight times. So that would give you eight power to all of your systems. Plus, on top of that, it is also affected by your flow caps skill. So if we go down here to Starship Flow Capacitors, it's so that plasmonic leech bonus is actually increased pretty significantly. Um, I believe it's at a ratio of uh, what is it, ten to one? I, um, I'm trying to think here. I think if you have a hundred skill plus, yeah, I think the hundred skills gives you another point drained. So. Um, it would be, so I should be getting a little over two, uh, two energy drained per stack, or plus two uh, to all power settings per uh, stack of Plasmonic Leech. So at eight stacks, two power each, you get 16 power to all subsystems. And that is pretty amazing, especially for like a tactical character or a non-engineering character, I guess. Um, that's really great. and that's. And that's frankly what allows you to get all of your systems up to that 75 power to give you that amp bonus on your warp core. So that's that's the big benefit of the Plasmonic Leech is to take advantage of those amp warp cores. And just, you know, to keep your power levels higher, you know, in general, which helps in, in all aspects. So there's the Plasmonic Leech. The next thing I have here is the... Um, the assimilated module, which goes with the kinetic cutting beam. Both of these are fairly easy to get. You get them from the Omega Reputation. They're fairly inexpensive to build, and um, that two-piece bonus is is excellent. So, if you're you know starting out new, these are two things you want to shoot for um, as a very high priority because they give you a, a nice DPS bonus. Now, the next thing is let's slot out my tactical consoles. So in my tactical slots I always use these uh, vulnerability locators. Um, these you get from your fleet spire and they're fairly expensive. I believe 50,000 fleet credits and maybe 10 or 12,000 dilithium. M maybe not that much. Um, so, but these are the really the top of the line for the uh, tactical consoles. They give you, you can buy them for any of your energy types. So you can see here I have plus AP, which is anti-proton damage. So 
and so I'm running all anti-proton weapons, so these will buff that damage. And they will give you, on top of that, a 1.8% critical chance at Mark 14. You can see their Mark 14. This, so you stack these all up, that's giving you, you know, not quite 10%, so like 9% crit just from the tactical consoles, plus the you know, increase in actual damage. So again, these are, you know, very important. These are the best, pretty much the best, uh, tact you know, uh, tactical consoles you can get. Now, one thing I don't have is I don't have the the really OP um, low buy uh, consoles that you can get with low buy crystals. I, I believe one is the Bioneural Infusion Circuit, and the another one is the Tachyo Kinetic con Converter. I think those two consoles are honestly the the next best consoles you can get. They're universal consoles that have you know crit. Uh, crit severity bonuses, and it might even be crit chance as well. They are very, very good consoles that would out prioritize most of these other ones, but I do not have those. So I go with the uh, zero point energy console, which you get from the Romulan faction. Um, and it's a pretty decent one. It gives you a 1.9% crit chance, so it's decent. It gives you uh, power to all your subsystems, again, good. It gives you well, the power. Insulators is not that great, but since I don't have the better consoles, that's what I use. Now, what I like to do after that is fill out the rest of my science consoles with uh, the embassy. Yeah, the embassy consoles. So these consoles you get from your star, your uh, fleet uh, embassy. And there's lots of different varieties, but the one you want is, well, it depends on what you're going for, but if you're a science character, you'll probably want the one with the particle generator uh, modifier. But in this case, I'm going with the one that has the flow capacitor modifier, because again, flow capacitors help your plasmonic leech. So I'll just slot this in there. I thought I had two of them. I apparently don't. What I could do is, um, yeah, I'll just do this for now. Oh, and uh, one other thing about these consoles that also makes them quite good is they get a proc to your weapons. So if you see down there, uh, plasma explosion. And it's plasma explosion proc to energy weapons. 2.5% chance for a 1800 damage proc. I believe it actually does a little more than that. I need to go out into space. But uh, that proc is actually um, decent. Uh, it does add damage to all of your weapons. It does, I believe, bypass shields, so it's also good in that respect. Um, so it is a good console. They do stack, so you can stack up several of these. I don't believe it's buffed by exotic damage. I don't think it's buffed by your tactical consoles either. Um, but I might be buffed by things like attack pattern alpha that buff all damage. I'm not quite sure on that. But these are very good to have in your science consoles. Another very good console is this one here. This is the uh, console you get from the Kobali Samsar Cruiser. Um, and this thing um, it gives you a passive re uh, hull healing uh, bonus, which is okay. But the reason that this console is so great is when you activate it, it gives you this regenerative integrity field buff. It basically gives you a massive, uh, massive self regen to your hull. It's almost god mode for uh, for the duration of it. I think it's for 20 seconds or so. Yeah, for 20 seconds you are <laughs> pretty much almost invulnerable. I mean, it, it regenerates your hull so fast, it, not much can uh, could take you down during that time. So that's a good survivability console to have. Um, so this is the build I'll go with to start. So before I finish up here, I do want... Oh, uh, and I also need to do my bridge officers. Uh, uh, yes, don't want to skip that. All right, so for bridge officers, you can see one of the unique things about the Nandi is that it has six bridge officers. 
which is pretty cool. Which means that you can benefit, especially as a Romulan officer that I am, you can benefit by putting all of your Romulans in here with the uh, trait uh, Superior Romulan Operative, or SRO. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. I actually have... Um, I did buy the... Uh, I did buy the... Uh, what was it called? The Delta Pack that, that came out. The Delta Pack it had th has three um, intelligence officers in it. And a couple of them are actually really good. This this one's pretty cool. It, this one is actually a Reman, but he has the superior Romulan operative trait. So this is a good officer if you're interested in getting that Delta Pack. I'm actually not sure if that is still around. Uh, going to the C store here. There it is, Delta Operations Pack. In this pack you get uh, three, including all the the Intel ships, which some of which are actually quite good. Um, it also gives you three uh, very rare uh, intelligence bridge officers. And it's pretty cool because you actually can, one of them is this guy here, which is actually a Reman that has the uh, superior Romulan operative, which is kind of cool. He also gets superior infiltrator, which is good. The other one you get is another Romulan. She has, uh, again, the superior Romulan operative and superior subterfuge. And the other one you get is a Liberator Borg Romulan, which uh, gets efficient, which is an okay trait, but doesn't really, um, they can't compare to a superior Romulan operative. So so I usually put my um, uh, Reman as the top here, as my top tactical officer. In the second slot here, I will put my other Romulan tactical officer. Uh, she also has traits. She also has superior Romulan operative, but only regular subterfuge. If you're a Romulan, um, you can actually get more of these Romulan officers that have uh, superior Romulan operative. They are pretty hard to get. Probably the, mo the best way to get them is just to buy them off the exchange, which they can run pretty expensive, anywhere from 8 million to 20 million. Um, or there is a slim chance you can get a DOF mission. If you go here to your personnel tab while you're on New Romulus, there is a very rare chance of having a recruiting uh, mission that will pop up to get uh, a Romulan officer. And then there's a random chance that that Romulan officer would have the superior Romulan operative trade. So those are the ways you can get more uh, officers with that trait. And that's part of the reason, honestly, that Delta Pack is so nice, is because it gives you two officers you know, right off the bat that have the trait. It saves you a lot of money, or a lot of energy credits, anyway. So those are I'm going to slot into my tactical officers. And for my engineering officer, I believe I do also have a superior Romulan operative here. And for my science officers, again, I have... Uh, I believe Rita has SRO. Do you have Rita? Yes, you do. Okay. And for my second science officer, I have my secondary guy here. Um, and Rook has it too. Yes. Okay. Now for the Universal, I'm kind of debating. Um, this ship is woefully lacking of uh, engineering bridge officers, so I'm probably... I'd like to go with an engineering officer, but I don't know if I have one that has SRO. No. Oh, yes I do, of course. Riven does here. She is the that's the one that I got out of the Delta Pack, of course. So put Riven there. And Rumble, you go there. Alright, now I have to decide what powers I want to put in here. Um 
usually for my secondary, uh, well, let's start with my primary guys. So for my primary engineer, I always go with emergency power to shields and uh, emergency power to weapons. Um, I keep these two cycling. I actually use what's sometimes referred to as a drag build, which is... Um, I'll show you my duty officers in a minute here, but you run three damage control engineers in your duty officers. It allows you to cycle these pretty much 200% uptime, and uh, that keeps your shield power up, and it gives you um, a resistance rating to your shields, so that's good to have that perma up. And then the uh, emergency party weapons, of course, is an amazing ability. It gives you a flat damage increase, 13.33% to all weapons, and then also the weapon power setting goes up by a lot, like 30, 30 points. So having these two up perma is gives you, helps your power levels and your defensive and offensive capabilities. So I always have those two. And in my second engineering, I like to have, I always like to have engineering team for debuff removal um, uh, and, and for hull healing, so it's always a good ability to have. For tactical abilities, I'm going to run, probably going to run this. I'm going to have, I like to have two attack patterns and two fire at wills. Since I'm running a beam build, fire at wills are your best ability for increasing beam damage output. And um, I run two attack patterns so that you can alternate. Attack pattern beta is nice for the debuff, so everything you hit with your weapons, it gives them a damage resistance debuff. And of course, attack pattern omega, which is great, just gives you uh, yourself a flat uh, uh, damage buff and all kinds of other nice things, resistance rating, flight speed, turn rate. So that's always a great uh, attack pattern. And in my second tactical slot, I will run the uh, tactical team. Which is nice to have to balance shields for you, um, and it slightly increases your energy weapon damage um, and kinetic weapon damage too, I guess, and removes some some debuffs. So it's good to have. And then, uh, what do I want in my science engine science slots here? So that I was running an Intel power here, but this is not. This is actually a pilot. This uh, science is actually a pilot hybrid seat. I don't have any piloting abilities, so I'm just going to go with Gravity Well. Um, Gravity Well 1 it, it's just such a useful ability in so many different uh, queues, and it's a good crowd control ability. It's actually nice to have, because honestly most of your tactical base ships don't have a Lieutenant Commander Science, so it's nice to actually have that on this ship. That might as well take advantage of that with the Gravity Well. Of course, for science, I always run these two powers in, um, in almost every build. I mean, you always want to have a science team for debuff removal and shield healing, and you always want to have hazard emitters for removing, uh, uh, like, hull, hull damaging abilities like plasma fires and whatnot. Plus, it is in its own right a good hull heal and resistance to hull, so good, solid all-around abilities. Now for my secondary science officer, I'm not quite sure. Usually I like to run polarized hull um, just to get rid of those uh, tractor beams. And polarized hull also actually gives you a resistance rating for 15 seconds, so it's a good ability. And for the uh, lieutenant ability here, I'm kind of debating. Um, I know one of the things about the Nandy warships is that it gets the trait here that makes you, uh, that gets this greedy emitters trait. I won't start with this ability. I haven't leveled this ship up yet, but this gives you minus 50% to weapon power cost, so that's really good, and plus uh, to all of your power settings when you use Energy Siphon, Tachyon Beam, or Tychon's Rift. So for that last slot, science slot, I will put one of those three in there, and I think for now I'll just start with uh, tachyon beam. Um, Tychon's Rift shares a cooldown with Gravity Well, so I don't know if I want to really use that. And Energy Siphon is so-so, not a really great ability, honestly. So Tachyon Beam was recently buffed. I don't use it that much, but I thought I'd give it a try here. 
Alright, so those are the bridge officer slots. I did say I wanted to show you my duty officers, so let's do that. So here we go. So my duty officers, I do run Agent Narul. He is a shield distribution officer. He was... I, I think I might have also gotten this guy out of the... Um, shoot, I don't remember where you get this guy. I'm, I think I got him out of the Delta pack. I'm not quite sure about that, though. I'll have to look that up. Um, but when you... Uh, your attack pattern and beta power to restore 0.2 of your hull when fire and energy weapons. Kind of cool. Not a huge thing, but gives you a little bit of hull healing when you have attack pattern uh, beta going. Which I do run, so... Next one is I run a con officer for the recharge time reduction to tactical team. Which is good. Let's, uh, I think it also gives you reduced recharge by six seconds and improves your attack. Oh, uh, plus eight. Yeah, so it gives you a slight buff to your attack patterns and uh, reduces the recharge time. So that's pretty cool. And then, like I said, I'm running a Drake build, so I run three damage control engineers. These guys give you a. I'm only running the rare ones. The ultra rare ones are kind of expensive. I would like to get them at some point, but. These ones still give you a 30% chance. I think the Ultra will give you 35% chance. But each one of these has a 30% chance to reduce the recharge time of your emergency to power, emergency power to subsystem abilities. So, like I said, I was running these two emergency to power, emergency power to shields, emergency power to weapons. So every time you activate one of these, you get three rolls of 30%, and if any one of those rolls are below 30%, you get the reduction in your recharge time. And like I said, we do have two of these cycling. Each time one is activated, you get to roll three times for 30% to reduce the recharge time of both of them. So it has a you know reasonably high chance of keeping them up, you know, 100% of the time. There are some, you know, there is some chance that you might miss a cycle of one and then one would be down for 15 seconds, but it's not too bad. I mean, if you're really worried about it, you'd have to run two copies of these um, to, to make sure they're up 100% of the time, but this ship just doesn't have the slots for that. If you have a really heavy engineering ship with lots of slots, you could do that. And then you wouldn't need the three damage control engineers. All right, anything else I should show for the build? Um, you can see my traits. Uh, won't go through them in too much detail, but... I guess I can focus on a couple here. This one, Beam Barrage, you get for leveling up uh, the Beam Crafting skill up to level 15. And I only mention this one in particular because it is so good, and it was actually recently buffed. But this Beam Barrage ability enhances specific uh, powers 2% all beam damage bonus for 30 seconds, and it stacks three times. They recently buffed it, I think, till the duration now is 30 seconds, so you can actually keep this up almost on all three stacks up 100% of the time so it's a really really good trait to have um, the rest of these traits last ditch effort is not I don't know it's an okay trait but it's just defensive this the warp core theorist just gives you a little more power I always like to run accurate and elusive they're good solid traits accurate gives you the 10% accuracy elusive gives you the 10% defense of course some are Romulan so you run Romulan operative um, beam barrage. Warp Theorist gives you a little bit more uh, warp power, um, and it also increases your uh, energy power transfer rate, which is kind of nice, it, but it's a small amount, so it's not a great ability. Once I get more uh, better abilities, this one, you know, you could un unslot this one. Again, I do run anchored. Um, Probably on this Frangie ship, I won't be using that much because I plan to be flying around, circling around, and uh, broadsiding things. But uh, this is still a good ability because it does give you such a nice damage buff if you are standing still. Point blank shot, which will be nice on the ship, um, that gives you uh, a really good energy uh, bonus damage when you're up close to your target. And Crippling Fire, again, this is also not that great of a trait, but I don't really have anything better I can slot in there right now. But this just gives you a, an accuracy penalty to the enemies um, when you hit them. Oh, when you crit them. Okay. 
There you go for my starship traits. I'm running all hands on deck, uh, the most OP trait in the game, which gives you uh, it reduces the recharge time of your science powers and your captain powers. So this is you want to keep cycling your um, tactical or command officer abilities, and each time you do that, it'll give you this uh, reduction in your captain and science abilities. Very very powerful. I'm also running Energy Weapon Cycle. This was the new power they just released um, in the uh, Tier 6 Battleship pack. Oh, in the All Hands on Deck power, power you get this one from the uh, from the command ships. Um, I believe it's the Tactical Command Ship um, that, you, that you have to get in the Sea Store. This one you also get from the Tier 6 Battlecruiser pack that was just released. You get that in the Sea Store. And the other two traits, I honestly don't have anything good. I run predictive algorithms because I'm. You get that from specking into intelligence. It gives you a, a accuracy buff and it removes debuffs, so it's okay. But once I get better traits, this one will probably be leaving. Um, and I also run improved brace brace for impact. Again, it's just a defensive trait, but when you hit your brace for impact, it actually gives you some temporary hull points. This. Um, it only says 1700. It actually gives you a lot more than that. I'll have to look at it in space. For the race traits, I'm running pretty standard here. Um, precision, uh, which gives you your 4% crit chance, pretty much required that you get this from Romulan Reputation. Advanced Targeting Systems, Crit Severity, you get that from the, I believe, Dyson Reputation. It's another very good trait. Now these Ox to Power, Ox, uh, Ox Power Configuration, there's an offensive one and a defensive one. Now the offensive one, um, the reason why this is so great is that it uh, gives you a damage to, a bonus to all of your to all damage based on your auxiliary power level, which is why you'll see I actually run a pretty high auxiliary power level because um, it gives you such a good damage bonus. I believe it's a category two damage bonus, which actually buffs your overall damage and not your base damage. Um, I guess I can just quickly explain that. I know you might hear people talk about Category 1 or 2 damage buffs. I guess the way I think about it without going into a lot of math is that the Category 1 buffs buff your base damage of your weapons, whereas the Category 2 buff your overall damage. So after all the Category 1 buffs are calculated, the Category 2 buffs are calculated on top of that, so you get more out of it for a Category 2 buff, which is why this one is good. Now for the fourth trait, Probably if I was going for max DPS, I should be running um, the armor penetration one. But this was recently nerfed. It's still okay, so I probably should still be running this, but I like my ships to be a little less squishy, so I actually run the... Since I'm running high aux power anyway, I run the other Nukara trait for a little more um, damage resistances based on your aux power. For the active traits, I just run all four of these space traits. So, um, yeah, the shield you get, I believe, is it from Nukara? The Refracting Tetrion Cascade from Nukara, the Quantum Singularity Manipulation from Romulan, and this Deploy Sensor Interference Probe, which is from the Iconian rep. They're all actually pretty decent abilities, so, and they all have good situational uses. I always keep them on my hotbar. For specializations, I won't go into too much detail here. You can see I'm pretty heavily specced into intelligence all the way down. I haven't gotten all the ground abilities yet, but I do have all the space abilities. And in pilot, I went up to uh, rock and roll, which is a very handy ability, especially if you're doing the uh, crystalline entity uh, queue. Um, it's very good for uh, for a about a four second immunity, I believe it is. While you're in the roll, you're totally immune to damage. Um, but I would like to invest further into pilot, and if you look, there is an ability, a starship trait, called Pedal to the Metal, um, which you get from the pilot tree. This is a very, very good trait. Um, oh good, I can, I can mouse over it. It says plus one all damage bonus per two seconds flying at full throttle. So this is the kind of ability where it would actually be really good on the this Nandy vessel, where you could just throttle to max and circle around your enemies and be strafing them, you know, with your broadside of your eight beams, 
and while all that time while you're at full throttle circling them you could get up your um, stack up your pedal to the metal so that's something I am shooting for I just don't have it yet it's good on like any kind of your escort builds or any build that you know you're gonna be moving around quickly at so let's see that was my skill build I'm not gonna go into I could do a whole nother video on skills um, I'll just quickly scroll down here so you can see what I've got I've of course got you know your typical uh, maxed out your typical tactical traits here um, I of course have my electroplasma systems for maximum energy transfer rate and since I'm running plasmonic leech I'm also getting the flow capacitor skill so there we go there is the meat of the build now I did say I would show you how to get a fleet uh, elite fleet warp core so to do that you need to go to your so if you're in a fleet um, what you need to have is a spire your fleet has to have a spire tier 3 in order to get this and I'm going to head there right now so to be able to buy these um, so like I said you have to have that tier 3 in your spire and then they cost I'm not quite sure I think 14,000 fleet credits and some measure of dilithium I'm not quite sure exactly how much but I'm going to warp to um, the fleet solenoid Dyson sphere spire let's go there this video is running pretty long but I still there are still a few things I wanted to show I would like to also show the appearance of the ship which is pretty cool I showed in the ship tailor um, and of course I'd like to actually run it through a few um, few cues and you know do a patrol on it just to, so you can see how this build actually performs in action but I will probably take a break here uh, and come back and do that as a separate video but for now what, once you get to your fleet spire, you run over to this guy here, your space equipment vendor, and pull up the store. Now you're going to look for your elite fleet warp cores category here. And finding the correct one is actually pretty hard. So you want to make sure it has the amp modifier. That's number one. And then you also want to make sure it has a good uh, modifier for where how it transfers energy so in this case this one is weapons to aux which is actually it's actually good since I always run max weapons power I always look for weapons to another system usually aux uh, because of the new car I trade I want as much aux power as possible so let's see here Set it. Yes. Yep. E cap efficiency trend. Well, that one is pretty good, but I'm not sure if that's the one I wanted. Let's see. So hard, they're not sorted in any logical way. Let's see. Yep. Yes, I 
do believe this is the one. Amp e cab SSS weapons to aux. Yes, I believe this is the one I want. Um, so, um, so yeah, let me buy this. It is 14,000 fleet credits, so 12,000 dilithium. That's kind of more than I thought, but let's buy it. All right, and let's slot that in. So the reason why, again, I explained the AMP already, but the other reason why people like this Elite Fleet Plasma Integrated Warp Core is because it also gives, you can read through the bonuses there, one of them says increase to base resistance rate of all power levels, and increase to base regeneration rate of all power levels. So it's good. Um, that resistance rate, what that actually does is it makes it so it actually resists your own weapons firing uh, drain from your weapons power setting so as you're firing your weapons you know it's draining power from your from your energy um, from your energy pool this actually will resist that effect so it's kind of um, it's kind of like some of the other similar bonuses like um, like the, the Borg 2 piece and everything else it, it helps keep your weapons power maxed now you can actually get an elite fleet core uh, with the amp modifier from you can get it from just the regular fleet starbase. Um, I'm not quite sure what tier that is, but just from the regular fleet starbase, you can get a, a good warp core there as well. If you don't have access to the spire, you could always do that. Um, so there it is. The build is now complete. Um, I don't have a red matter capacitor, unfortunately, uh, which would be nice, but uh, those are not available anymore. So one of my device slots is still open. But yeah, so th that is the build. The build is complete. Now, like I said, I'm going to take a break. I will come back and do another video to actually show this thing in space and take a look at the stats in space, do a Q and an Argala run so you can see how this build actually performs. So that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching.